Hey, welcome back. So part two, let's talk about 2015 and talk about the games that I liked the least. And you may know there's probably a lot of games I didn't like, but if you actually break it down, uh, there weren't that many stinkers this year. The stinkers for me, it's on a grade, pretty much a grade scale. I don't even have 10, do I? No, nope, I don't have 10, so close to 10. But the, ga the games are, for me, um, um, not enjoyable or uh, uh, leaving the collection if they they don't scratch an itch for me and uh, if they're not what I thought they were going to be so there's some you know maybe there's some uh, pre preconceived biases built into some of my decision making about these games so I'm sharing this with you not because I want you to not buy the games I'm sharing them with you because I can't play a war game this weekend because my uh, downstairs has been overrun by house guests and my wife doing Christmas cards on uh, using the PC and the printer and printing envelopes and complicated things. So I'm hiding in my game room, but I have no uh, uh, real time to focus on very much. So let's look at this list of guys that I like the least in 2015. First up, where is it? A block man, area movement, Napoleon the Waterloo uh, campaign, 1815. If you saw my other video, you saw that I had three titles. Oh, I thought we'd stop recording for a second. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, dead pause. Uh, there are all these little messages flashing up on my screen while uh, I'm trying to talk to you. Uh, I played several Waterloo titles this year. And this is uh, by far and away the worst one that I played. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and try and explain to you why. Suffice to say that I sat down after reading the rules with a friend to play this game, with the expectation that it was gonna give us a good, a good feel for the system. This thing's been reprinted several times. Uh, there's a, you know, Kickstarter edition, and I think we were playing on the Kickstarter edition. I, I bought an older edition, read the rules, was all ready to go in started playing, realized that the rules had changed so completely because of the you know, adjustments to the uh, order of battle that I was playing a completely different game. So we reset and started because we, we I was moving pieces either too far or not far enough or whatever the case might be. We ended up uh, stopping four turns into this thing and thinking, this is, this is out of whack, what's going on here? And uh, my buddy had actually played it before and he couldn't work out what was going on, but once you kind of broke out of the script for the for, for the game, if you start doing anything historically, it, it wasn't working. And uh, I struggled to, and it's been a couple of months now, so I can't recall why, but I just got, I got to say that there's this, there's this premise that goes with some area games and some area block game companies that if you just create, get some blocks and put some pretty stickers on it and have the ABC combat system and you know, you know, get the terrain and slap some areas on it and think, you know, try and be clever with a few little bits and pieces for the areas. Uh, you know, making one connect just to one, to one area in one section and connect to two in another and make it just so and curl the river just at the right spot around the road so that, you know, don't, if you have to, it's the same freaking game over and over and over with some minor modification and some you know theme-based bullshit to try and make me feel like I'm playing a Polyonics game. After playing Fallen Eagles, which I would call the same, basically the same level of complexity as uh, as Napoleon's uh, Waterloo game, this thing, um, far superior game, but a text encounter. Waterloo 200 blows this thing out of the, out of the water, but this you know this is I would call this kind of more strategic than the actual battle. So I was very frustrated with that, and I'm not going to waste any more time. It's four minutes and thirty seconds on that friggin' thing. So let's move on. Here's another title that I was kind of disappointed with: Victory Roads. Really interesting system. Beautiful artwork. Very busy, but beautiful artwork. Nice maps. Very good production quality. Great charts, great rules, very clear. I think I kind of messed up the Hitler track and stuff like that, but I found myself playing this game and shuffling my 
my forces around from basically from north to south or east to west. One hex, one hex, one hex, one hex. Move two hexes, cover cover the hole, cover the hole. Then you know there'd be another big offensive and blow everything up, and I'd have to try and retreat back. I I I struggled with the attrition based nature of the game. I didn't see any massive blowouts with the, with the Soviets. I've seen some AARs where I have no idea how uh, how guys achieved what they did. I, I can't even begin to imagine how that occurred. And I was talking to another buddy of mine who's played this a couple of times, played the campaign by himself, and he and I are looking to play this as well. But like, there's no freaking way. So someone's playing the rules wrong somewhere. They have a great time with it, right? So I guess that's all good. So this didn't, no, this really didn't scratch the itch for me in, in terms of that uh, aggression to the fall of Berlin thing. I think it's a noble effort, but it really, it really wasn't doing it for me this year, this this time around. I'm gonna keep the game, and I'm probably gonna play it again. So not all is lost, but uh, but it kind of went on the air list for the year. So that's uh, victory roads. Okay, here's one that's probably gonna upset a few people. Tunisia, OCS. Uh, it's an older game. Probably the most, probably one of the ugliest maps I've seen in a long time. So let's just get the aesthetics out of the way. Blur. Uh, I found the gameplay. I was playing the latter. I played the campaign, the latter part of the campaign. Uh, so there's two campaign games, and I played the second and second one. And uh, wow, I just, I just, it wasn't working for me. It was very slow, very stilted. Uh, neither side could really uh, accumulate enough force to, to have a compelling punch. There were uh, very few supply or logistical issues, which is nice for an OCS game, not to have to be freaking out about uh, having enough SP. Everyone seemed to have enough to get done what they needed to do. I started working with Montgomery's forces in the, I guess, basically the south of the map, I suppose. And, you know, we started going through this clunk attack, clunk attack, clunk attack, clunk attack thing. I was like, wow, this is really fun. And I thought, well, let me try and move up the other end and around, um, what is that city called? Mercer or whatever it is. And uh, Tun it was Tunis. And uh, it also, there just wasn't enough force for either side to build up uh, this compelling attack that would allow anything to happen. So some dudes would move up, they'd try and attack, or they'd threaten to attack, and then a reserve unit would pop in if something got DG'd and, uh, and make the, the, you know, the follow-up attack a, a non-starter. I'm not gonna attack a one-to-one, -one. I'm not gonna attack a two-to-one. So you don't do it, and then the uh, Commonwealth, they try and do the same thing, and they don't have enough forces to attack, and so we all kind of, everyone kind of backs down, so it becomes this massive, dug in stalemate. So I haven't worked out how to play that game correctly yet. Not that excited about trying again. I may or may not keep that game. I'm not sure it's going to stay. So OCS was a bit of a letdown uh, this year uh, in general. All right, I uh, don't have it here with me, but Cox's campaign, Simonich title, so I'm gonna, it's going to be heresy here again. Uh, I was not a fan of that game at all. Uh, I, I thought the... Well, first off, I did not like the combat results table at all. I, I, I have a real hard time accepting that on a seven to one attack or an eight to one attack that I'm going to take losses at all. I'm just, yeah. and when I say losses, when it, when it's particularly, particularly if I'm attacking as the Germans, and I've got seven to one odds, and I have to take a, pan, a Panzer loss. Well, I'm just not going to do the attack. I'm going to attack at, uh, at suboptimal losses because I'm not uh, suboptimal uh, odds and keep my armor back and keep it, my powder dry. And then next turn, try and move them through. So I found myself doing things that just weren't, didn't seem to be historically right, didn't feel right because I'm not going to blow up half a division of Panzers when, I, when I've got an eight to one attack. I've got to take one step loss. Not going to happen. Very frustrating. I think it's probably hard for the Germans to win anyway. I cranked that scenario out. I think we went uh, half, I got halfway through the, the campaign game and it's kind of like, yeah, okay, I can see where this is going. Germans have absolutely no chance of winning this thing unless we get some stellar rolls. And if I do get stellar rolls, I'm still taking step losses against units, four units that I wouldn't want to take losses for. So didn't enjoy it. Yeah. That said, I'm currently playing RDN 44. I'm quite enjoying that a lot, I must say. It's a Quite enjoying that a lot. I'm enjoying that game, and I'm enjoying the system more. 
although I think we're, we're uh, by not using the combat factor limit, I think we're making a mistake, but that's okay. Anyway, not a, you know, so I've sold it, so it's gone and it won't be back. Uh, disappointed, but I can see uh, I can see the value of the Simonich uh, philosophy more readily in RDM forty four than I can in uh, in the Caucasus campaign thing. All right, next title that I was not impressed with, and I'm still in the middle of playing over here. Probably can't see because of the glare, but that is uh, Trajan, and it's the, the four modules linked together, and we're playing a long scenario over there. It's Marcus Aurelius's. Um, a campaign, I think starts 162 or 167 AD, something like that. Rules, rules holes the size of a Mack truck through a paper mache wall. I mean, just ho horrible, horrible. Uh, the good news is even a dumbass like me can uh, house rule the stupidity away, number one. And number two, uh, there's enough goodness here that I can ignore it and it goes on my shit list for the year not because it it's a horrible game and I'm not going to play it because it's just not well done and I can't believe it's got the ratings it has uh, I think people want to like it even though it's not it has not been play tested correctly and the rules have not been tested properly uh, in an integrated system with the Trajan expansion so poop on the folks for not doing it right I mean I, we, I, we deserve better. If I'm going to drop a hundred bucks on the Ancient Wars series expansion and go around and try and buy all the modules and then put this freaking thing down, it ought to work, right? So shame on you for not doing a better job. And what am I talking about specifics? So people just think I'm being a whiny bitch. So here's the specifics. Uh, the random, the rolls you make to see whether or not you can move or whether you take attrition or lose a unit or, or whatever, or you get lost. They just don't work. A Roman legion is not going to get lost rolling up the peninsula uh, from one end of Italy to the other. They are not going to get lost moving down the Danube River when they have another river to their south and a mountain range to their north or whatever the case may be. They're not going to get. They're not going to be moved one hex off, right? It's just not going to happen. And and I don't believe in one month I am going to lose an entire legion to attrition. Because, and because there are no breakdown units, it just messes everything up. So if I had breakdown units, if I could take a five strength legion and make it a four strength legion and then replace that at some point in the future, okay, I could see that for the duration of the month, I had stragglers and they got lost and so you know, maybe someone got lost permanently. But some got lost and they all were recombined and we put that legion back together at some point in the future, then that's cool. But don't make me lose an entire 20,000 20, guys or 10,000 guys. Come on, wake up. So same goes for the Persians. They're not going to, you know, no, so no one's moving, right? So you sit around and go, oh, I'm not going to move those guys because they're in a pretty good position. You come to me and you'll lose more units getting to me to have the fight than you will actually have in the fight. That's not the only issue with the game, but that's the biggest issue with the game. And uh, I, I'm not going to rag on this thing any further, but it was really disappointing because it looks good, even though the counters are thin. The artwork is fantastic, and I love the concept of the you know the ancient style maps and all the rest of it. But just it's just not done right, and it's just really disappointing. So I actually might promote that to one of the worst games I've played this year. I have it down in about a fourth level, but we have another title that sucked. Uh, so Guam, uh, from the Grognard simulations folks, um, I am, I've now read, uh, two or three different island, Pacific Island based rules systems, and they're all very, very similar. And, and I think that's just a function of people have read the histories and gone, well, I think this is how we need to model it. So that probably means that they're all right in general, which means Guam probably has an appropriate set of rules for for the Pacific Island, uh, um, the Pacific Island uh, battles and stuff like that. But that said, I think the way it's implemented in terms of combat factors and movement rates and scale, uh, hex scale, uh, is wrong. Or wrong or not well thought out or could have been done better. And, and, it, and it makes for a heavy math, and when I say heavy math, I don't want to have to count 
through 15 units in a stack every time I want to have a combat. Because every time I have a combat, I'm going to lose one, uh, basically because of the way their odd system works. There seems to be a lot of issues with odds tables uh, this year. Uh, their odd system, I'm always going to take a combat loss. So that means I'm always losing something. So if I had 64 or 124 factors, yeah, you're counting that many, right? Uh, factors, and then I lose four, six, or eight, well, I've got to subtract that out and then you know, kind of remember, well, that, those guys had about 128 or they had 120 or they had 80 and I lost six. So now how much is it worth? Well, you've got to recount the stack. And people, you know, now I know some of you are saying, well, why are you counting that stack? Again, Kevin, you should be using the consolidated units. Well, that's fine, pal. You can use the consolidated units, but the moment you take a loss, you've got to break that freaking guy down. And now if I've got three units in a stack, and we're starting to get some jaggy jaggies here. If I've got three units in a stack and I'd have to lose a unit. I'm going to lose one from one stack, from one uh, unit, and break it down. So now I've got the breakdown unit comes off, and I've got four more units there. Go through this attrition-based cycle with my with the enemy, and then the next unit has to take a loss. So now it has to break down. So now I've got ten units in the stack. So you can clearly see how I can get to have fifteen units very quickly. That is painful. There's uh, six or seven maps in this thing, or six maps in this game, and about uh, 4.5 of them are, are completely not needed because it's all ocean. And really, you don't, you don't even need these naval units. All you need is a chip to put on the, on the, on the contact on where you're going to uh, use your naval forces. You're not going to bring your naval forces inside this, this zone where you can be attacked unless you're a dumbass. So why, why even bother? Why have all this ocean that goes all the way around this little island? Why not make the island bigger and the scale, you know, instead of making it a, a kilometer hex, just make it 500 meters. And now these, these, these um, battalions and these companies and these platoon scale units all start to make more sense because it's 500 meters a hex instead of 1,000 meters a hex. So that just didn't work for me and it became very attritional and very repetitive and that may well have been the case. But the way that the game implements that system really just kind of broke down for me in a hurry to the point where uh, my frustration with the, the movement rates, the scale, and the, and the CRT just made it a very disappointing experience. And, and I was actually very, very much looking forward to it. So uh, too much math, poor CRT. There's actually, you're, you're actually much better off attacking it two or three to one than you are attacking it four or five to one. Uh, it's very hard to understand what the vitric conditions are because there's no explanation of what control is and no explanation of what actually has to be controlled in the vitric conditions for Gua. And if I'm wrong, post a comment and show me exactly where it was and I'll, ta and I'll, and I'll edit this part of the video out. But that, that is absolutely wrong in that game and there's no VCs uh, clearly defined for that game. And I also think it's impossible for the US not to lose a victory level and do better than history. So why have it in there in the first place? All right, that's why I'm done with that mother. Here's a game that I played earlier in the year, Road to Charon. Road to Charon may be a fantastic game, but I'll never know because that when it was designed, the physical components were designed, we decided to put a, a, you know, a latex, what do you call that stuff? The sticky, oh, I knew I'd forget when I wanted to talk about this dog on it. The plastic sheeting, the plastic sticky stuff that you can uh, cover a page of paper with to keep it protected, whatever that is called, <laughs> that sticky paper, right? They decided to co coat the counters in that. Yeah. So when you punch the counters out of the, I'm so frustrated that I can't even say it, uh, punch them out of the, uh, the, they, they stick, first of all, the counters stick to each other on the sides, and then when you pick them up and put them down, they stick to your fingers, and so shit goes flying all over the place, and it's, a, it's just a drag, right? So the interfacing between the, uh, the counters and your hands and the map is, a, is just a, a negative experience that overwhelmed my ability to enjoy the game. The game itself, the rules, the game charts, the map, and the scenario in general that we're finding out is fantastic and really, really interesting. If they come out with another set of counters that won't stick to my fingers, 
I mean, I'll play it because it looks like it's a great game, but I gave up after about three turns because I got tired of that. Right, so that's that. Now, uh, the uh, second worst game that I played this year, it's a Polish title, and you know, I love the Poles for even trying, right? And I, it's Tactics and Strategy Magazine, number 40, the uh, 21st Century Battle System. Avoid it, it's not finished. Half the, the, the tables have, uh, you know, still have Polish wording stuck in them. The rules are kind of lame and don't all tie together nicely. And I was really disappointed because I really wanted this to be awesome. And I really I felt the gameplay felt kind of lackluster too. I played three or four turns and moved some things and did some things. I'm kind of like, eh, what happened? <laughs> I can't really tell. No information counters that you really, there's some information counters that are needed and there are none provided in the game. You get these you know, piecemeal, really thin, uh, almost wafer-thin counters. The maps are gorgeous, the counters are crap, and the rules are awful. Done. Next. Uh, my last game that I played in 2015 that would have to be amongst one of the uh, most annoying titles that I've played would be Quartermaster General. A fantastic game if you want a 45 or 50 minute filler and you want no history no, uh, no, um, <laughs> no history and a little bit of fun, but really it's just a mechanistic thing where you, you just wait till the, the, the U.S. blow the, the enemy out of the water with their aircraft cards you play and all that sort of crap. And next thing you know, you're done, the game's over, right? So, uh, we, I played that three or four times with the fellas and we all kind of... <laughs> One guy said, let's play this, and everyone just looked at each other, groaned, and I said, I'm going home. Right, because that was really all that the, the, the choice we had, because the only thing we could play in 15 minutes. But I'd rather not play a game than play Quartermaster General. That's how bad that game is. Uh, I could try and tell you that there was some historical flavor there, but really it's just a card game that happens to have a war theme, and that's about it. So, a fair swag of different games that have different levels of issues. I would say the first two or three, now that I think about it, I probably put this game lower down on my list as in it, it's a worse game than I said it was. I don't know why I let it get so high up on the top of the list in terms of being an okay game, because it's not an okay game. I would certainly say in terms of games that were not good, that these two fellas are actually okay and it will probably uh, be played again. But they were, they were a disappointment to me. The last small handful, as you can probably tell, were really frustrating for me and I'm very disappointed. But that's okay because not every game is meant to make every gamer happy. And that's just kind of what we have to do when we play these things is uh, take our lumps. What I like to do is to experience some of these things and uh, uh, see if they're any good. And if, they, if they're, they're okay, we keep them and try them again. If they're not okay, well then maybe we let them go and play someone else's copy again. But overall, I gotta say this year was fantastic in terms of gaming experiences. And we'll talk a little bit more uh, later on in part three about what I'm excited about for 2016 because there's some really, really cool games that were published this year or republished this year that I'd like to talk to you about. Talk to you soon. Merry Christmas.